good evening uh, we will start today's session prateek uh, if you want to give a presentation you can start Is it visible, sir? Yes, it's visible. You can start. Good evening, everyone. My name is Pratik Kishor Shetty. I received the project Understanding Descriptive, Diagnostic, Predictive, and Prescriptive Models. The task in this project I received was Exploratory Data Analytics. The objective of this task was first to perform EDA on the data set, second to summarize the key findings from EDA, third to visualize the data using appropriate charts and graphs, fourth was to identify any outliers, missing values and anomalies in the data. Consider the situation. Imagine a data analyst who aimed to combat credit card fraud by building a statistical model skipping the vital step of exploratory data analytics. He dived into morning straight away. As he progressed, he faces several issues. Without performing EDA, he encounters data inconsistencies, missing values, and unbalanced data class distribution. His statistical model struggles to capture the complexity of fraudulent patterns, leading to poor predictive performance. The analyst's oversight is apparent as the model generates a large number of false positives, overwhelming the investigators who try to avoid these frauds with unmanageable workload. The unaddressed missing values further compromise the accuracy, causing critical fraud cases to go undetected. The lack of EDA resulted in flawed foundation and thus leads to the realization that thorough data exploration was important for building a reliable and effective prediction or detection system. EDA is essential for a data set as, it, as demonstrated in the story. The need for this EDA. EDA is essential for data sets as it helps uncover insights, patterns, and potential issues. EDA helps analysts understand data inconsistencies, missing values, and class imbalances. EDA insights enable informed decisions on data pre-processing, feature engineering, and modeling strategies. ED helps in identifying problem complexities, ensuring models capture relevant patterns effectively. ED addresses data quality issues, mitigates biases, and enhances predictive or detection systems accuracy and reliability. Thorough ED lays a foundation for building robust analytical solutions. The contents of my task included importing libraries, data set details. I'll give you a data exploration, the data exploration I've done this demo, in the demo later on, detection of missing values, descriptive statistics, data visualization, correlation analysis, outlier detection, hypothesis testing, and the subsampling was done. And under the subsam after I completed my subsampling, correlation analysis. Outlier detection hypothesis testing was again done on this subsample data set. And then scatter plots were drawn. Libraries that I used pandas, numpy, matplotlib, seaborn, ttest, dbscan, and standard scalar was used. Pandas provides data structures and data analysis tools that were used in this task. NumPy provides efficient array operations and mathematical functions. Matplotlib enables the creation of 2D visualizations and graphs. Seaborn provides a high level interface for creating statistical graphs. ttestint was a function that performs two sample independent t-test 
comparing the means of two independent samples. This was used in hypothesis testing. DB scan and standard scalar was used in pattern recognition later on for scatter plots. Data set. This data set was taken from Kaggle and presented transactions that occurred in two days of September 2013 by European cardholders, where we have 492 frauds transactions out of a total of 284,807 transactions. I performed data exploration as well. Once I performed data exploration, I realized this, that the that this data set is highly unbalanced. The positive class, or which is frauds, accounted for just 0.172% of all transactions. Due to confidentiality issues, all inputs except time, amount, and class in this data set contain, contained numerical input variables, which are the result of PCF transformation. Detection of missing values. Here I performed, here I tried to find missing values and tried to find out the different data types used in this data set. This data set did not really have any missing values and consisted entirely of numerical data type. 30 columns were of float type and one column was of a binary in integer type. The data set included attributes such as time, transaction, amounts, and v these numerical v values v1, v2, v3, so on till v28, which were reduced using PCA transformation. And like I said, there was a binary variable class indicating presence of fraud. If this feature was one, it implied that there was a fraud, it was a fraud transaction, and if it was zero, it was a valid transaction. I also applied descriptive statistics. On applying descriptive statistics, I got the following values for all transactions, fraud transactions, valid and valid transaction amount details. Here you can see the mean of fraud transactions is greater than the mean of valid transaction amounts. But what is important to note here is that the fraud transactions is very small compared to the number of valid transactions. This bias in the data can lead to future prediction errors if data is not subsampled. Data visualization. This I will be talking about later in my demo as well, but just for a general purpose, on the left side, you can see the graph before subsampling. On the right hand side, you can see after subsampling. On the left hand side, you can see that the number of fraud club, uh, number of rows with fraud transactions is very low compared to the number of rows with valid transactions. After subsampling, I, I made sure that the number of valid transactions and fraud transactions were equal. This is again something I'll be talking later on my demo as well. But on the left hand side, there's a before subsampling graph and right hand side, you can see a after subsampling correlation heat map. What's important to note here is that on the before subsampling, there isn't much variance, varied colors. You can see most of them show negative correlation on the, which is on the darker scale in the spectrum. On the right hand side, there's much more variance in colors, which implies that we can use this heat map for further analysis. Outlier detection. Outliers are data points that deviate significantly from the majority of the data points and can provide important insights into the data distribution and potential anomalies. Consider an example target column with the values 10, 12, 14, 16, and 100. Here the first quartile value is 12, third quartile can be found as 16, and the median is 14, or it's also the quartile, second quartile value. The interquartile range value, or IQR as it is known, is Q3 minus Q1, which is 4. And the lower threshold value is 6, which can be calculated 
by subtracting 1.5 times IQR from Q1. And upper threshold value can be calculated by adding 1.5 IQR to Q3. So the lower threshold value we get is 6 and the upper threshold value is 22. Here from these five values, we can note that the value 100 doesn't lie between the lower threshold and upper threshold. Hence, 100 is called the outlier in this, in, in this set of values. Outliers can provide valuable insights about the data and its distribution. They can indicate unusual or unexpected observations that deviate from the norm. Outliers may arise due to various reasons such as measurement errors, data entry mistakes, or general anomalies in the data. Identifying outliers is crucial for data analysis as they can affect statistical measures and model performance. This can be significant data that needs further investigation but also outliers could mean insignificant data that should be discarded. Hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing is a statistical method used to evaluate two competing claims or hypothesis about a population based on sample data. It involves formulating a null hypothesis, assuming there is no significant association and an alternative hypothesis suggesting a significant association. By comparing the test statistic to a critical value or I'll be using the p-value instead, we have a, we make a decision to either reject the null hypothesis or to accept the null hypothesis. Subsampling and scatter plots. Subsampling, it is important to know that subsampling can result in transformation information loss where valuable data is discarded, potentially affecting model performance. It may introduce bias by selecting a subset that may not be representative of the overall population. The smaller subsample data set can lead to increased variability, making model results less reliable. Rare instances of fraud may inadequately may be inadequately represented, limiting the model's ability to detect less common fraud patterns. Additionally, subsampling increases the risk of overfitting where the model becomes too specific to be uh, to the subsample and may struggle to generalize to the unseen data. So one needs to be careful while implementing subsampling. The steps I implemented in subsampling were randomly shuffling the data to remove inherent order or bias. Then I selected a subset of fraudulent transactions and an equal number of non-fraudulent transactions. I combine the selected subsets to create a new balanced data frame. And then I shuffle this new data frame to randomize the order of the samples. I laid, uh, to find a pattern in these in this subsample data set, I reduced the top 10 positively and negatively correlated features. And I formed a graph using a PCA reduction on the left hand side and a TSNE reduction on the right hand side. This is the data exploration that I did. I found out the shape. It showed that there were 31 columns and 284,807 rows. The data types were all of them afloat except class. This class did class showed if this class feature was zero, it implied it was a valid transaction. If it is one, it implied as a fraud transaction. The num percentage of fraudulent transactions was just 0.17%. And then I tried to detect if there were missing values and there weren't any, all of them were zero. The number of fraud transactions of 492 
compared to the number of valid transactions, it was 2,84,315 transactions. And then I visualize the data comparing the number of transactions to valid to from uh, between valid and fraud. Then this was done based on the amount. There was a, a density to amount distribution. You can see most of the trans amounts are very small. They aren't very large transaction amounts. Then I found the correlation matrix. We'll instead see the heat map. I'll try to explain the heat map instead. Here in the heat map, you can see that most transactions have a negative correlation. What I do mean is on the spectrum, they have a, they have a color representing towards the negative side. So we cannot make much out of this heat map. Again, I tried to find the outliers and there were about 23,000 or 10,000 for each feature. Like for example, V8, you can see. There were around, for V8, there were around 23,000 749 transactions that were in the outlier. Then I performed hypothesis testing. Here I used an alpha value of 0 0.000001 which isn't usually used in commercial practice. Usually alpha value used was 0 0.05, but for a better prediction, I use 0 0.0001, which means an a accuracy of around 0 0.999999. Here you can see some of them, for example, V13 has no significant association. Whereas the others are showing an, an association between the feature and the target variable. And it's not just V13, there was V15 and V22 till V26 that showed no significant association between the feature and the target variable. Since I wasn't able to make anything out of this data set directly, I subsample this data set. The new data set had around 984 transactions, had 984 transactions, out of which 492 transactions were fraud and 492 transactions were a valid transaction type. As you can see, the new subsample data set classes were equally distributed. And then I drew the correlation heat matrix heat map. Here, what's important is the last row because we are trying to figure out if it's a fraud or a valid transaction. So, so this graph is just the last line of this graph is important. But in the spectrum where white is light orange is correlation of one and black is a correlation of minus one. You can see that V17, V16, V14, V12, V10 and V3 are negatively correlated by around minus one in the spectrum. And there's a positive correlation. And as you can see in these values like V11, V4, V2, and you can include V19, which is around in the spectrum of 0 0.5 as a positive correlated variable to this target variable class. So 
So I've just, yeah, I have taken the first seven transactions here. You can see negative correlation here. So more negative this value of V70s, more likely it is that it is a fraud case. Like for example, minus 12 is a fraud here. Then minus three is a fraud case. Then minus nine is a fraud transaction here. And for some feature like V11, which is positively correlated, you can see higher this value, more likely it is a fraud. Like 10.27 is a fraud here. 3.211 is a fraud. 3.823 is a fraud here. And then I found the outliers in each of these negatively correlate negative correlations V17, V16, V14, V12, V10, and V3. But since there are many data points in this negative correlation, I didn't really remove the outliers. And these were the outliers for positive correlation. And then I performed hypothesis testing for the uh, features which were either showing very high positive correlation or very high negative correlation. You can see that most of them showed an association. None of them showed no association. But when I come to the other features, V1, V5, V6, for example, you can see some of them do show an association but it's not necessary that shows a very high amount of association. That's why I didn't include them in the scatter plots while using the features for the scatter plot. Here you can see V13, V8, V13, V15, V20, V21, V22, V23, and so on till V28 all show no significant association with the target variable class. Using these most positively or negatively correlated features, I drew a scatter plot where the red scat red points show fraud transactions and valid uh, transactions are shown by a blue spot. This is using PCA reduction and this one is using TSNE reduction. What's important to note here is you can clearly see that the blue transactions can be seen to form a different cluster from the red, uh, from the red spots. This is one key feature. Again, you can see it in this TSNE reduction using TSNE reduction as well, that you can form a completely different cluster using the blue spots than the red spots. Conclusion. The original data set had a very low percentage, which is 0.17 percentage of fraud transactions, resulting in an absence of strong correlations between the class variable fraud or valid which is and other features this suggested that the data set was imbalanced and required careful handling by subsampling the data set with an equal number of fraud and valid transactions a more balanced representation was achieved this led to a heat map that exhibited varying positive and negative correlations between different features indicating presence of potential predictive power for fraud detection. Using the 10 most negatively and positively correlated features, scatter plots were generated using both PCA and TSNE dimensionality reduction techniques. The resulting plots exhibited distinct clusters with valid transactions forming a separate cluster and fraud transactions forming their own distinguishable cluster. This indicates that there's a potential for accurate classification and identification of fraudulent transactions using these features. For reference, I use the data set from this link and the other, for other information, I used the other link. If 
there are any questions, I would be ready to answer. Okay, Pratik, I think the presentation is over. Okay, so firstly, I think the presentation data was enough and you had good knowledge about all the things. Even the clothes were explained well from your side for the machine learning. Uh, but what I was feeling the whole presentation was you had not prepared for the presentation in the sense the delivery, the delivery of the presentation was a little bit weak from your side. Okay. Even though, even though the presentation slides were very well made. Okay. And the ex explanation was done well, but there was something lacking in the sense there was no confidence in your side. Even though, even if you would have been confident, I did not feel that confidence from you. Okay. So try to, Try to improve on your delivery because <clears throat> all other factors are very, very good from your side. Yeah. So you'll be excelling these presentations. Okay. Yeah. That is my only review because you haven't missed out on anything. And there isn't anything that I can point out and say, yeah, this is not right because everything has been done well. That was a good presentation from your side, Prati. Try to improve a little bit, not significantly, yeah. a little bit on your presentation. Okay. Oh. Thank you so much. You can leave the meeting, Pratik. Uh, Avishka, you can start yes, your sir. presentation. Yes. Is it visible? Yeah, it's visible. You can start. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, sorry, good evening. Uh, I'm Avishka Sanavne and the uh, title of my presentation is Research and Compile a List of Popular Data Science Techniques Used in the Stock Market. So here we are going to talk about the uh, popular uh, list of popular data science techniques that are usually used in uh, stock market. Introduction. Data science plays a crucial role in understanding and predicting uh, the behavior of stock market by leveraging large amount of financial data to extend meaningful insights and build predictive models. Some keys in which data science contributes to this field are data collection and pre-processing, uh, ex exploratory data analysis, predictive modeling, and sentiment analysis. So, uh, so some list of popular data science techniques that are used in stock, uh, stock market are uh, times first time series analysis. Uh, time series analysis is used to analyze historical stock prices and predict the future price movements based on patterns and trends in the data. Techniques like auto regressive integrated moving average, uh, that is ARIMA, exponential smoothing, and gauge models are commonly employed. This is time series analysis and it is one of the most popular techniques that are used in uh, data science and stock market. Uh, second, machine learning. Machine learning are utilized to build uh, predictive models that can forecast stock prices or uh, they, uh, they are used for trading patterns. Techniques such as regression, decision trees, uh, random forest, uh, some support vector machines, that is SVM, and neutral networks are commonly used. Sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis involves uh, analyzing news articles, social media data, 
or the textual information to gauge public sentiment towards stocks or companies. Natural language processing, that is NLP techniques, including text classification and sentiment classification algorithms are used to extract insights, that is sentiment analysis. I mean, this is one of the most popular technique used in stock market analysis. Uh, fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis involves analyzing financial statements, company performance, and macroeconomic factors to involve uh, the intrinsic value of stock. Data science techniques are employed to process and analyze a large amount of financial data efficiently. Uh, the technical analysis. Technical analysis involves analyzing historical price and trading volume data to identify patterns and trends that can guide investment decisions. Data science techniques such as pattern recognition algorithm are used to automate the identification of chart patterns, support and resistance levels, and other technical indicators. Market microstructure analysis. Market microstructure analysis focuses on understanding the dynamic and the behavior of finance, uh, financial market at granular level. Uh, data science techniques such as order book analysis, high frequency trading data analysis, and liquidity modeling are used to gain insight into market efficiency and price impact. Portfolio, uh, I mean, this is one of the most uh, popular data science techniques that are usually used for uh, predicting stock stock market. Uh, portfolio optimization. Portfolio optimization aims to construct a portfolio of assets that maximizes returns while minimizing risk. The data science techniques such as mean variance optimization, factor modeling, Monte Carlo stimulation are employed to optimize research allocation. Uh, the uh, last one is event-driven analysis. Uh, it involves studying the impact of specific events uh, such as earnings announcements, announcements, mergers and acquisitions uh, uh, or regulatory changes on stock prices. Uh, it uh, The data science uh, techniques it includes are event studies, um, anomaly detection, natural language processing are utilized to identify and analyze the effects of such events. In conclusion, uh, so stock market is complex, a system influenced by various factors, including economic conditions, geograph, uh, geopolitical events, and investor sentiment. Uh, it is also important to note that while data science techniques can provide valuable insights and prediction, uh, these, these factors are important to consider uh, in stock market analysis. Therefore, prediction should be interpreted with caution and combination of data science expertise, financial knowledge, and marketing understanding is necessary for successful stock market analysis and decision making. Also, it is also very important to note that field of data science is constantly evolving. The combination and application of these techniques may vary depending on the specific requirements and objectives of the stock market analysis. And in conclusion, I would like to say that data science techniques plays a crucial role in analyzing and predicting stock market trends today. These are some sites and uh, papers that I have referred for uh, the, for this PPT. And uh, for any questions, you can also mail me at this Gmail ID. Thank you. Okay, Avishka, the presentation was fine. Uh, a little bit, so your delivery was perfect. Unlike the previous intern, you had a good delivery, but you lacked a good presentation. That is, uh, your slides and everything, formatting included, they need to be improved on, okay? Uh, at the same time, the amount of data that I've put in the slide. So there were models that you were talking about, like machine learning and other models that you used for the prediction of stock market analysis or anal of or of any analysis. What what you can have, what you can do from the ongoing presentations that you will give from 
uh, for the next two three months. Uh, what you can do is keep the key points like machine learning and all those things, and take the uh information away. Take it away to a ne- uh take it away to a slide where I cannot see it. In the sense, take it away to a notepad or a word document where you can read it out, but I cannot see it. So it will inculcate a message that you know about these key points and you're telling us instead of you're reading us you are reading it off of the slides because it doesn't give a good impression if you're reading it off the slides it will give a better in, uh, impression if you read it off some other document which is not visible to us okay so yes. this is one of the things that needs to be improved and there are small small things that I'll write it in your review okay just little small small things like formatting how you can make your sides more presentable and all those things i'll write it in your review just improve on these but your delivery is perfect so you just need to improve improve on these and your presentations will be very good i think yes okay thank you so much you can leave the meeting avishka thank you